everybody. I thought I would do a video on my hay storage area for you. So far I've revealed the catio, the tack room, the working stall, my wash bay area, and my future plans for it. So today I thought, well, I'll show you my hay storage area. So the hay storage area is 40 feet deep and 20 feet wide with the little minusing of the six by six posts on each side. So I lose about a foot, but not all the way, just in every 10 feet. Um, so 40 by 19, let's just say that, it is going to be where I store my hay. It is super, super tall. <laughs> I wish I could remember how tall the um, top right there is, but I just honestly can't. But I can tell you it's really, really tall. Um, and this is where we will keep the hay. I like to get my hay all at once so that I don't have to worry about hay shortages during the winter months when you really, really need the hay. And also just the, um, the change of hay per cuts. So I just like to get the same cut and get it all at once. And so when we designed this area, I wanted to make sure it was enough room to store all of the hay. So I think I have enough space. <laughs> I am currently getting 29 bales that are the large square bales. They're three feet by three feet by eight feet. They're supposed to be 800 pounds a piece, and I'm going to start weighing out my hay, and that should get me a year's worth of hay. So uh, the front we decided to leave open because in the old barn, we had the garage bay. This bay right there is much larger than the bay in the front. The one in the front is probably a 12 foot wide by 14 foot high. Ouch. Tag just stepped on my foot. Um, uh, opening. And we always had trouble getting the skid steer in there and moving around to stack the hay. So we always felt like we were wasting a lot of space because we weren't able to get in there and put the hay where it was using um, the efficient amount of space that it needed because we really had to just put the hay in there and just stick it where we could so that the skid steer could get in and out without tearing down a wall because <laughs> that's not what we wanted. So when we were drawing up the plans for this barn, we made it completely open so that we could get the skid steer in and out backing and going in different angles. And when we got in there, we didn't have to worry about if we were backing out hitting anything. So we left it completely open. And of course, the mistakes that I learned were I wanted to put a 20 foot gate in here because 20 feet. Did not realize that the six by six post would take up six inches on each side, which only gave me 19 feet, not 20 feet. In the United States, unless you have it custom made, they do not make a Poor Leia, why are you picking on Meowth? Meowth, Leia. Um, so they don't make a 19 foot gate in the United States. They do in Canada, but I wasn't able to get one shipped down. So uh, we came up with the plan of taking the extra six by six post that we had, they left behind because they overcalculated, which is fine. That's probably better to have more than less. And we put one on each side of the opening of the hay area, and then just gave it a little angle, just to give it a little, a little something, something, you know, so it wasn't so boring in the front. And then I just painted it uh, white. We went to Sherwin Williams, and they color matched the trim. So I just painted them white to go with the trim that was already there. And then we were able to get a 12 foot gate and a six foot gate to where they meet right there. Because before what we did was two 10 foot gates, but they overlapped by a foot. So this, these two parts of the were over here instead of like that. So this is a six foot and a 12 foot gate make 18 because we added the foot using the six by six post. 
And then we got a concrete bit and we drilled a hole in the concrete so that we could put these down in there to hold the gates together so that the horses could not get in here. I do have to use a chain, which I clip over here when I'm not here, um, when I leave. But whenever I'm here, I just run it through there. The reason is because Tag, he was just here. I'm not sure where he went. But he will get his head under here and lift this up like so. And then it pushes down and then he can swing the gate open. So even though there's nothing in here that is going to hurt the horses, I don't want them to just come in here and have a buffet. So I put the latch on there at night or when we're not here to keep Mr. Tag from breaking in. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Tag Tag. So this wall right here was kind of like a fun bonus, something I wouldn't have thought of, but I knew I wanted wood kickboards for the running shelter. So when they put the wood kickboards for the running shelter, that gave me the boards here, which I was really glad because normally when you put down the first bale of hay, you kind of scooch it and push it. And if it pushes up against this wood, it's not gonna hurt anything and it's, you know, strong stronger <laughs> um but the tin or the metal is really really weak and if you were to push up against this it would cause it to bow and you know deform and everything else and then i would have wonky um metal so that worked great for that wall i put a extra piece of plywood that we had. It was just extra from when we were doing the tack room. And I just put six screws in it so that that wall would be covered. So when we push the hay over here, um, it won't be hitting the, t the metal on the bottom right there. And as of right now, so the bales are three by three by eight. I think we're gonna be able to get three high. And I got 29 of them. So this whole area right here should hold about 24 of those. And then we'll just put the extra over here. This side is kind of my working side where I put my uh, manure fork and the porter grazers and just these ladders are here right now because they actually put cameras in today. And all of this area is just for my stuff that I use on a daily basis and just needs a little spot to be stored. And then the rest of it, and <laughs> Kathleen is like, I have an itch. Um, then the rest of it will all be filled with hay. So with the magic of YouTube, boom, just like that, hay is in the barn. So you might be thinking to yourself, hey, no pun intended, that is not how she said she was going to do it. And you're right, this is not how I was going to do it. But here are 29 bales. They are three by three by eight, which I said earlier. There's around 800 pounds per bale. We got them all the way back into there. And holy moly, I have a lot of extra space. So, <laughs> So much more space than I thought I was going to have. This is our very first time ever um, putting in square bales. The round bales is what I designed the barn for. And they take up, obviously, a whole lot more room. We also would not have been able to stack round bales four bales high. So those ones back there, is that's actually the fourth bale on there. Um, there's no way we would have been able to do that with a round bale. So, uh, quick calculations, which if you've watched my videos before, you know I'm not any good at math. But from one post to the next post is 10 feet, and it goes to half. So about 15 feet wide, or long ways, is all I needed. And it's still that 19 feet uh, wide with ni a nice little clearance on each side for air ventilation. 
the causes, the most common causes for barn fires is hay, because it doesn't have enough air circulation, and fans. They uh, don't have the enclosed motors, and uh, they get overheated because of all the dust, and those are the two major things that cause barn fires. But anywho, I guess electrical would be next after that. Not the point. Point is, got the hay in, and oh boy, do I have a story to tell you about getting the hay in. Well, I'm gonna save that for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it, and I will talk to you very, very soon because I have a hay story to tell you.